Thank you. It's always a joy to see you come in. Guests. George, do we have any guests today you'd like to introduce? I've been looking and looking and don't find any. Except that we can introduce the minister's wife. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, she and I have been married for four and a half years and have a home here in Phoenix. Uh, we have a young son, Charlie, who is looking forward to meeting all of you two weeks from today. And he will be here with us. Let us now go into uh, worship. As we enter this sacred place, put away the pressures of the world that ask us to perform, to put on masks, to put on brave fronts. Silence the voices that ask you to be perfect. This is a community of compassion and welcoming. We bring all that we are and all that we yet can be to this safe and this holy place. The peace of God to you. And to you also. We come to worship God, to listen to the one who calls us here. We come to worship our God, to shout with joy. To the God of all people. We come to the Creator of all things, to be bathed in the waters of life. We come to the feast of God's faithful, to be fed by the one who never forsakes us. We come to worship our God, to sing aloud to the one who saves us. Come, let us worship God.
prayer and invocation. God, our holy friend, you invite us to participate in a life of hospitality. Help us to freely share with those whose lives are restricted or crushed by the means of this rapacious world. Make us now the gracious receivers, the generous receivers, in the spirit of Christ our Lord. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for inviting us to your banquet. Forgive us, O oh God, for those moments when we take for granted those things which are most important, your presence in our lives, the love of family, and our relationships with others. Teach us, O oh Lord, to come together as your children, to learn to live together, and to build a world that reflects your peace and your justice. For those who are gathered together here, O oh God, fill our lives with your presence, that we might share your presence with those outside these walls. Strengthen our faith, O oh God, and encourage our hearts that we might live your love in our world as Jesus did in his. We ask these things in the name of Jesus, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. 
pray. Gracious and loving God, you nourish our lives and refresh our spirits. Transform these gifts and transform our hearts that we might be nourished to us. May you wish us and people on this day and every day of our lives. will be humbled, 
and he who exalts himself will be exalted. Then Jesus said to his host, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers, or relatives. If you do, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. The Gospel of Christ. Let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, for this time to come together. And we ask that the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. During the battle of the wilderness in the Civil War, Union General John Sedgwick was inspecting his troops. At one point, he came to a parapet over which he gazed out at the direction of the enemy. His officer suggested that this was unwise. Perhaps he ought to duck while passing the parapet. Nonsense, snapped the general. They couldn't hit an elephant from this distance. And he fell over dead. <laughs> you see, this general made one fatal error. He took too much for granted. In our scripture lesson this morning, we find Jesus eating in the house of a Pharisee. He's at a banquet. He watches as the guests jockey for their place of position, seeking for an honored place at the table. And then he offers what seems to be simple advice. Instead of sitting at the seat of honor and risking embarrassment of being moved down, sit at the lowest place that your host might move you up. Well, for people of the Middle East, there is nothing more honorable than to be invited to someone's home for dinner. It's an even greater honor to be invited to sit at the head of the table. And at first glance, it seems that Jesus is just offering a lesson in manners. But what he was really saying was much more than this. He was saying, don't presume upon your host. Don't take too much for granted. Well, here we are nearly 2,000 years later, and we humans still have much in common with our ancestors. In this case, we still share one common human failing. We tend to take too much for granted. We presume too much. But curiously, I stumbled across a list of, top, of the top ten things that human beings tend to take for granted. The number one is the ability to walk on two legs. Our fine motor skills, mathematics, language, nature, cooking, the ability to cook our food, medicine, electric power, our memories, and our imagination. Well, of course, the older we get, I think the more apparent it becomes of how important each of these elements of human evolution are for our lives. But how much more are we guilty of taking for granted? Do we take for granted our freedoms that come as a result of being a citizen of this nation? Do we take for granted our insulation from the horrors of warfare that so many other world citizens must face every day? Do we take for granted the privileges that come 
with living in a wealthy nation? Do we take for granted the short time we have here on earth? Well, I think the Bible has much to say about this sin of presumption. For in fact, there are many things that us human beings tend to take for granted. This particular biblical story in the Gospels illustrates one example. It's our tendency to presume upon others, to view the world only from our own perspective, to not consider the points of view of others. It's no coincidence that the lectionary texts for this week all touch on the theme of humility. Well, there was a middle-aged farmer who wanted to be a preacher for many years. He wasn't quite sure if that was what God's will was for him. One day, he was out working in his field. He decided to stop and rest under a tree. As he looked up into the sky, daydreaming, he saw in the clouds what appeared to him to be the letters P and C. As he thought about it, it came to him. P and C stood for Preach Christ. So he jumped up, he sold his farm, and he went out to preach Christ to his neighbors. He was convinced that this was what God's will was for him. God was leading him to this. But unfortunately, he turned out to be a horrible preacher. After one of his sermons, a neighbor turned to his wife and said, I'm not so sure God wasn't telling him to plant corn. <laughs> well, I think it's clear in the Gospels and in this particular biblical story that Jesus understood well how often we fail to consider the perspectives of others, how much we take for granted. How are the crowds that follow Jesus have heard this story? The poor, the marginalized, the outcast, who did not very often, if ever, receive an invitation to the banquet. Perhaps hearing about the jockeying for position among the elites would have been seen as comedic, if not pathetic. For people who are not typically invited to the banquet, a seat at the table might have been satisfying enough. In our current political climate, I think many of our politicians could do well to hear the words of Jesus. Much of our politics over these last few years has become theatrical. Men and women jockeying for position, scoring political points by mudslinging, fighting their way to the head of the table, taking for granted the important work that many of them could and should be doing if they could only learn to work together. Like the guests in our biblical story, both have missed the point. What truly matters is not where you sit, but it's being at the table. It's about the privilege and the responsibility of being able to come together, to work together, to build relationships with each other, and to learn to love one another. Jesus understood this, and those who were usually denied a place at the table might have been in a better position to understand it as well. This is why Jesus said, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends, or your brothers, or your relatives, or your rich neighbors, because they can repay you. But invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and then you will truly be blessed. See, the truth is, it's not about what you've built, but it's about who you've become. It doesn't matter so much what you have done, what matters is who you are. What is important is not your status among your neighbors, but your relationships with those people who fill your lives.
But it is often these things that we tend to take for granted. How often after tragedies, major illnesses, and other life-shaking events have human beings been heard to say, I will never take my life for granted again. I will never again take for granted my family and my friends. Well, the simple truth is, they probably will take those things for granted again. We all will. All of us share this common human failing. But we also share in common our life here on earth. This life here on earth that we share is short, but it's precious. It's valuable. And what we do with our time here on earth really does matter. Let's not take for granted those things in life which really do matter. Those times we have to come around the table, to build relationships with one another, and to work together to make this world a better place. The late Christian author Tim Hansel said, one of the greatest tragedies of our modern civilization is that you and I can live a trivial life and get away with it. Let that never be said of us. For one of the other things that so many people are guilty of taking for granted is their responsibilities. Never take for granted the fact that you have something to offer. Nobody on earth can provide what you do in quite the same way. Your life does matter. And this fact is both exalting and humbling. Because with this fact comes great responsibility. In a hospital one evening, a patient knocked over his cup of water. And it spilled all over the floor beside the patient's bed. The patient was afraid that if he got out of bed, he would slip and fall. So he called for the nurse's aide to come and mop up the spill. The patient didn't know it, but at the hospital, there was a policy that said if there were small spills, then the nurse's aide could clean it up. But if it was a larger spill, well, they had to call maintenance to come and clean that up. The nurse's aide came in and decided that the spill was too large to be her responsibility. She called the housekeeper department. The housekeeper arrived and said, no, this spill is too small for me to take out a mop and bucket. Well, it's not my responsibility, the nurse said, because it's a large puddle. The housekeeper did not agree. It's not my responsibility, she said. This is just way too small. I've got bigger things to take care of. The patient listened for a time and finally became frustrated. He grabbed a pitcher of water, poured it on the floor, and said, is that large enough for you to decide now? <laughs> well, I think these two hospital workers illustrate a common human failing. I think we often presume that others will bear our load. My pastor tells a story of a, a early years in his ministry, back in the 1950s. A woman consistently gave $2 out of her $20 a week income. She gave this in the offering. He decided to confront her and to tell her the fact that he thought she was doing too much. The woman's response shocked him. She said, I don't have much, and I'm not able to give much, but what I could give, I will give. I will do my part and I will not allow anyone else to bear my responsibilities. But what about you? Will this truly be your church and your community? Or will you take for granted those things which really matter? The love of family. The relationships with friends and neighbors. And your responsibility to participate in the building of a safe and caring community in which we can all live together.
in peace. After all, isn't that really the point? Let us pray. Gracious God, continue to call us together around your table, teaching us to come together in love in the spirit of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>